Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve. But before we get started, make sure you go over to ninjanerd.org, check all of the notes and illustrations that we have made for you guys to utilize, study from, and I really think it's a really great thing because even with diagrams like this, it's really hard to create things on the whiteboard that we want you guys to utilize for study tools, so our illustrators are able to do that with the digital drawings. So make sure you go check them out. Give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and let's start talking now about the optic nerve. So as we move through our cranial nerve series, we're on number two right now, the optic nerve. And what is optic nerve? What type is it? The type of nerve is sensory. And what is the function of our optic nerve? It's for vision. And we can look right here on our diagram. We can see that this pink portion right here in the middle is where our optic nerve is. And let's recall that with all of our cranial nerves, we have pairs, right? We have a right and a left optic nerve. And as we look at this diagram here, we're bringing up all of the visual fields, right? We're looking at our optic nerve. So we have our anterior portion here with our eyeballs and our posterior portion. We have our left and our right. We have our left eye and our right eye. This is gonna be a very easy generic run through of this diagram. It's just to recall some pathophysiology of what's going on with our vision, right? So we have our visual fields out here. We get an image, right? It comes in through the eye and it can travel into the retina, which is where our optic disc is located. Goes down our optic nerve, through our optic chiasma, and then to the back, eventually to our primary vision cortex, right? So our primary visual cortex here, eventually is where we get to interpret and tell you know, what we're looking at, what we're seeing. And it's important for us to understand this, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I want you to think about how do we assess vision? What is our primary assessment that we use? There's two that we're gonna focus on when we do the optic nerve. That is our Snell and eye chart, right? Where we're gonna have them close an eye, stand far enough away so that we can identify which level of vision they're having, right? Then do it on the other eye. If they have contacts or glasses, note that they're on or off and do those as well. We also want to assess the visual fields as well. So we wanna be able to see, do they have uh, problems with their peripherals? So you can stand behind them and tell them when do you see my hands. You can also have them close one eye and then you can tell them, you know, what number is here, what number is here, can you see this number, tell me what number, focusing on your nose as they do that, right? We know how to do those. And it's important for us to understand which assessments we're using because what happens when they fail is where we're going to get our information on our assessment. So what are we going to assess them with? The Snell and eye chart and then our visual fields. So once we complete the assessment, if there is some sort of failure, that is where we're going to start thinking about what are some of the causes, right? And for our optic nerve, if they are failing, there's different areas that they can fail, which I'll touch on in a minute. But the things that could potentially cause them or the very generic overarching things are, is there some type of tumor or ischemia or a stroke that has decreased the blood flow to the optic nerve? Was there some type of trauma to the brain itself and anywhere within the optic nerve that could have been, you know, some type of head injury, some type of trauma? Is there something else going on, like some type of infection? Is there something genetic going on that could be causing some type of disruption in the optic nerve? That is where we're going to start, right? You just kind of start with this generic imaging or, you know, process of your head, like, okay, we're having issues with this assessment. It could be this, 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 or this. We have to investigate further. And that's where taking in and seeing the patient as a whole patient, not just you know, only assessing their visual fields or their eye, but seeing other things that are going on, will help us you know, travel down the route of a diagnosis eventually. So we're going to think about those causes, and then we're going to further investigate by some diagnostics, blood work, imaging, all of that. So let's put down here, what are some of the causes that we could have? One I forgot to mention was also medications or drugs, any type of illicit drugs or medications that the patient is on, there could be side effects from those as well. And when we look at this, we think about, okay, this image here that you've drawn up there, Kristen, is looking a little crazy. I just wanna show you how this works and how when you do assess a patient, you might be able to get more information and it's gonna help you understand what's going on. So, we have our right eye here and we have our left eye. And then we have visual fields, our right visual field of our right eye and our left visual field of our right eye. Same thing over here. Left eye has a left visual field and a right visual field. And we can see on both sides 
images comes in, optic nerve or optic disc goes down the optic nerve to the optic chiasma and then to the primary visual cortex. And we notice that in the optic chiasma, the first thing that we're seeing is that this orange and green is coming through, right? Our right and our left visual field for our right eye is coming down. But only our right visual field is the one that's crossing over, okay? So we have contralateral for one nerve, right? And we have ipsilateral for the other nerve. So this is where, when we have issues with our patient's assessment, right, there's some type of failure or discrepancy. This is where we could see some issues. So the first thing is, you're assessing the patient and they're like, I, you know, you do the Snell and I chart and they're like, I can't read anything out of this right eye, right? I done nothing, I'm getting nothing. So if we think about that, if we can't see anything out of this right eye, so our left and right visual field is blocked off, we aren't getting any green or any orange. That would indicate to us that anywhere from here up until where our right visual field breaks off in the optic chiasma, there may have been a potential issue, right? Same thing could happen over here. I can't see anything on my left. There could have been a potential issue in this area. If we have a patient that goes through and is saying, you know, we're doing the visual field assessment and they're, they're not getting anything peripherally. They're only seeing like right down the middle here, down the narrow. So that means peripherally they're losing their right visual field of the right eye and their left visual field of the left eye. So if they can't see these, right, they can't see this one and they can't see out of this side. If they can't see blue, they can't see this orange. If we follow those down, we're going to see that it's crossing right here in the optic chiasma. So that can indicate to us that there was some sort of issue right here in the optic chiasma, which is causing them to still be able to see out of both eyes, but also having a loss of that peripheral. And then the last portion would be, if we're having any issues in here or here, we would be looking at, is the patient losing their left visual fields of both eyes, right? So now they're only seeing through the purple and the orange, and if we follow that down, this side's great, but this side's not. So if they can't see out of the blue and the green here, they are having an issue back here on the right side, right? Primary uh, visual cortex issue back in here with the optic canal, or, if they're having trouble with this side, right visual field, they could be having trouble back here on the left side. So I hope that image makes a little more sense to you now, but I wanted you to get that if they're having issues, same side, different side, different fields of view, it all has to do with different areas within the optic nerve. Because this nerve, it has the optic chiasma, it's got that crossing over, where 50% of what you see in your right eye is sent to the left side, and vice versa, 50% of the left eye sent to the right side. So. I hope you learned something. I hope you gained a little more knowledge about the optic nerve from this video. If you did, like it, hit that subscribe, and as always, until next time.